maestro, maestro. Hmm. You remember me? No, I don't. Where have we met? But I'm your pupil, your first pupil, your best and greatest pupil. I've made your name famous throughout Europe. You teach me phonetics, you cannot forget me. I am little Aristide Carpate. What are you, Aristide? Why the devil don't you cut your hair? Oh, if I cut my hair, nobody notices me. I have not your imposing appearance, your chin, your brow. Hmm. Well, tell me, what are you doing here among all these swells? I am indispensable at these international parties. You can place a man anywhere in London the moment he opens his mouth. I can place a man anywhere in Europe. Excuse me, sir. I want it upstairs. Her Excellency cannot understand the Greek gentleman. Oh, indeed. I'll come at once. This Greek diplomat who pretends he cannot speak or understand English, he cannot deceive me. A tout à l'heure, mon vieux. Is that Capati fellow really an expert? My best pupil. But heaven help the master who's judged by his disciples. But if he meets you, Lazy, we're done. Don't let's bother about the bit. Let's go home. Oh, rubbish. That idiot. Now we're in for it. Are you ready? Come on, then. Darling, it's delightful to see you here. I thought I was going to have a little time. That fellow found us about Eliza. He'll blackmail us. Let him try. Her Grace, the Duchess of Care. Admiral Sir Charles Brown Halby. Miss Elizabeth Doolittle, Colonel Pickering, <laughs> Professor Higgins, <laughs> Admiral Kung <laughs> Wong, and Miss Su Ling Wong. How do you do, Colonel Pickering? How do you do? May I present Miss Elizabeth Doolittle? How do you do? How kind of you to let me come. Oh, not at all. The Mrs. Milka. Good evening. Oh, Professor, good evening. Who is this charming girl you brought? Is she a relation? Not of mine, no. She has such a faraway look, as if she always lived in a garden. So she has, a, a sort of garden. There is one thing I have observed about the English, Duchess. And oh, that yes, is... Yes, I, I adore observing the English. Let's go and observe them now. Come along, George. Oh, dear. That's such a bore about the English. And quite wrong. I like every ambassador. <laughs> oh, look, there's dear old Lily Fantail with a whole of Kew Gardens on her head. You have a rival here tonight. He introduced himself as your pupil. Is he any good? He can learn a language in a fortnight. Those dozens of them. The sure mark of a fool. <laughs> your Excellency is interested in Miss Doolittle? Yes. Could you find out who she is? Excellency. Lord Wilsham and Lady Wilsham. I feel rather like Noah standing on the bridge watching the loading of the ark. You know, two of everything. <laughs> uh, Colonel Pickering, uh, <laughs> tell me more about your Greek gentleman friend, won't you? A gentleman. He's the son of a Clerkenwell watchmaker. He speaks English so villainously that he dare not utter a word of it without betraying his origin. I help him to pretend, but I make him pay through the nose. I make them all pay. <laughs> and now, Professor Higgins, I should be delighted if you would present me to this Miss Doolittle. No, no, you don't. Can't you see she's talking to a duchess? Uh, Professor Higgins, the very man I've been dying to meet. I'm Isabel of the Sun. Fair fade of the globe. What extraordinary people seem to get in everywhere nowadays. Extraordinary. Colonel Pickering, unfortunately we were interrupted. Would you be so kind as to introduce me to Miss Doolittle? Well, I... Uh... You remember you so kindly addressed the Guild of the Navy Officers? Oh, yes. Excuse yes. me, but I've missed... No, no, this time all right. I want to tell you what they Enchanting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe it's true. <laughs> Miss Doolittle has a delicious sense of humor. 
wanting more, Professor. Do tell me. Yes, Miss Doolittle. I have found out all about her. Well? She's a... Well, now, go on. Oh. I say, Pickering, you know what's happened. Dear fellow, I hope you don't think I reduced that Carpathia chap to Eliza to win my bid. Oh, nonsense, but the game's all up, Pickering. He's found out all about her. I say, Pick, look at that. My child, my son, would very much like to dance with you. If I may be allowed the honor. Ambassadors, there'll be the deuce of a row. I wouldn't miss it for worlds, excuse me. Come on, Aristide, you've got to tell us. No. Yes, tell us all you know about this Miss Doolittle. No, no, that is my secret. Oh, oh. But I will tell Your Excellency, she has a right to know who Miss Doolittle is. Well, who is she? Uh, she is a film star. Oh, no. She's a fraud. Oh, oh, no, no. Yes, yes, she cannot deceive me. Her name cannot be Doolittle. Why? Because Doolittle is an English name and she is not English. Oh. But she speaks it perfectly. Too perfectly. Can you show me any English woman who speaks English as it should be spoken? There is no such thing. The English do not know how to speak their own language. Only foreigners who have been taught to speak it, speak it well. Yes, there's something in there. But if she's not English, what is she? Hungarian. Hungarian? Hungarian. Yes, Hungarian. Hungarian and of royal blood. I am Hungarian. My blood is royal. And did you speak to her in Hungarian? I did. She was very clever. She said, please speak to me in English. I do not understand French. French! She pretended not to know the difference between Hungarian and French. Nonsense. She knows both. And the blood royal. How did you find that out? Instinct, maestro. Instinct only. The Hungarian, the Magyar race, can produce that air of the divine right, those high cheekbones, those resolute eyes. She is a princess. It's the old Duke, exactly. What do you say, Professor? I. 
I say an ordinary Cockney girl out of the gutter. I place her in Covent Garden. <laughs> maestro, maestro, you are mad on the subject of Cockney dialects. The London gutter is the whole world for you. This girl is undoubtedly a, a princess. Have it your own way, maestro. Have it your own way. Thank you.